Hello everyone, my name is Anand and today we are going to learn some statistical functions in Excel. As we all know, statistics is considered as the foundation of data analytics or data science. So it is very important to study statistical aspects with the help of Excel. So before wasting any time, let's begin with the real time examples. So guys, as in the previous sessions, we have studied about the interface of Excel. Now it's time to dive deep into the Excel. So in last sessions, we have worked upon some functions also. So this time we are going to work upon some statistical functions. Excel is considered as ocean in itself. It is filled with so many functions, but statistics, as we all know, is a foundation of data science. So we are more concerned with the statistical functions here. So here we can see this is a table where the column is H, this is the table where we have another column that is weight. So if I want to find out the sum, average, count numbers, maximum and minimum values, so how can I achieve that? So simply if I want to get the sum, I will go to the formula bar here. There is an option called auto sum. If we click here, I will get these many options like sum, average, count numbers, max and min. So we will be working upon each and every element here. So first of all, let's begin with sum. So if I select sum, it is asking me for number one and number two. Here I want to calculate the sum of all the rows in each column. So I will simply select all the cells and I will hit the enter. So here we can find the total sum of age is 472. Next is average. So on a similar note, we will go to the auto sum where we will click the option called average. We will select all the rows once again and we will hit the enter. Next is count number. If I want to count how many number of cells are there, so I will go to the auto sum. I will click the count numbers. I will select all the cells and I will hit the enter. Okay, next function is max. So again, I will go to the auto sum, I will click max, I will provide the entire data, I will hit the enter. So 57 is the maximum age given in this particular table. Next is minimum function. Again, I will select all the cells, I will hit the enter. So, based on these statistical options, we have come to know that the sum of age of this particular column, age, is around 472. The average age is 33.71. The total number of records that we have are 40. The maximum age in this particular column is 57. And the minimum age is 80. So, this was the fundamental aspect, guys. Now we are going to move upon the next topic that is forecasting. For instance, if I have this particular table where the column one is date and column two is value, so it is called a time series data because this particular data that is value is dependent upon time. So if I want to find out the upcoming value. That is based on the historical data. If I want to find out the prediction, or the predicted values, so how can I do that? So, in this given data, we have the value from 1 to 13 of Jan 2024, but the value for 14th Jan 2024 is missing. So, the solution is this simply we will insert equals to sign, where we will have the option of forecast. We can see the multiple options are available, but we have to choose this one, the forecast. It is asking me for the x value. So I will simply give the x value here. Then it is asking me for the known y value. So in this case, the date column will act as an x and y column will be values. So I will be providing all these values. And next, it is asking for known x values. So in this case, 
these are all the known x values except 14 gem so after completing the bracket here so we have got this value as the predicted value so like this we can do the forecasting this is a one way of doing forecasting the another way is with the help of maps for that we have to go to the option insert we have to select all the table then we can go to the line chart here we will select the first option C we have achieved this particular graph here what we will do we will simply go and we will enable the data labels we will enable the access title also because it will be it will be very difficult then we will simply go and give the appropriate titles so here on x-axis we have date on y-axis we have value okay but this representation isn't showing anything regarding forecasting so again we have to go to these chart elements here we have to select trend line so we can see a thin dotted line this thin dotted line is called the trend line so in the back end of this entire process of forecasting the model a machine learning model is getting implemented and that machine learning model is nothing but a linear regression okay but i am not interested in finding out the linear regression line here but my interest lies in the fact that i want to do the prediction for the next like upcoming uh, upcoming days so here see we have this option here forecast forward so as i have to forecast for the upcoming seven days so i'll simply enter seven that is i'm going to do the forecasting for next seven days there are other options also available like set the intercept this is the equation on chart and this is the r squared value on the chart all these things we will be learning in depth in the upcoming sessions okay so once i hit the forward i have to hit the enter and see a line has been extended this extension is nothing but the forecasting if i want to uh, see it in a better fashion i can simply choose the another kind of a chart like this so this is the second way of doing the forecasting the third and the last one is to do that we have to simply select all the table that is entire table we have to go to the data here we can see the forecast sheet so based on the given table based on the given columns and rows that is fields and record there is an inbuilt option in excel that is forecast sheet once you click that sheet you will get this particular pop up window and if you say create automatically the entire forecasting will be done within no time here you can see date and value columns were already there because we built this forecasting with the help of this and we can see the forecast value here so based on the given that is historical data the model was able to build these many values it is nothing but the uh, here you can see it is the lower confidence bound and this is the upper confidence bound to understand this concept we will again have to go in depth into statistics so that we have to understand what is meant by confidence interval and all those things so as of now we have studied how to use the statistical functions in excel and also we studied three different types of forecasting so that's it for today guys we have studied the statistical functions and also we have studied three different ways of forecasting to study the further topics in detail in advance you will have to wait for the upcoming sessions till then keep up skilling